We certainly have, and this is the little bundle of joy. It looks like it is not too sure if it's playful. Or it's definitely been kind of on the move. And as we arrived onto the scene, she, Tundi also moved ever so slightly, 20 meters or so, into the shady spot where she's lying now. And it looks like the cub is heading back towards her. So will she try and pounce on mom and have some playtime? Let's wait and see. She loves kind of sneaking up on mom. And I can't believe how lucky we've been over the last few days. Literally sightings of this leopardess and her cub, I think, every single day for the last four days. And our luck continues. Now, as you can see, mom doesn't look too happy. I'm not too sure why. There's another vehicle um, in the sighting. And that's who she's growling at. But I'm sure what will happen is that vehicle will probably just retreat a little bit, give her a little bit more space, and then that way she will feel less likely to want to growl and snarl. It's funny, you know, some days she's completely relaxed and doesn't hiss and snarl, and others she acts a little bit temperamental. So I guess just like us as humans, you know, some days we're in a good mood, some days less so, and it's the same for wild animals. They too are allowed to have mood swings. Now, I haven't seen this cub trying to hunt or stalk or pounce on anything other than its mother. And with the amount of time that we're spending it, I think we definitely are going to start getting lucky seeing it trying to catch small lizards, grasshoppers. When it gets a little bit older, tree squirrels are a favorite for young leopards to try and catch. Not an easy prey item, but certainly a good challenge to allow them to practice and hone their skills. Now, there was a small water kill in this area yesterday, and, oh, Cubby got a little bit of a fright, not too sure from what, but there was a water kill in this area, and there's a chance that it's been finished, and Tundi is just full enough not to warrant going off on her next hunt. Kathy, well, you've mentioned that you, we're making it hard for you not to become very attached to this young little cub. Well, I think for anybody involved in a Safari Live, it would be a very, very difficult thing not to become attached to something so cute. And I guess, yes, the fact that we have been lucky enough to spend so much time with it over the last few days especially, and also a few weeks, makes us all kind of in that same dangerous boat of attachment. Now, for any of you who may be watching for the first time, it's important to realize that this little cub is still very, very vulnerable, and there's still a fairly decent chance that it will not make it to adulthood, and that is one of the catches with becoming attached with these wild animals, especially the cubs. Very good. We are going to stay put and be sure to call you back if anything else exciting happens, but it sounds like up in Kenya, Brent's lions are on the move. Watch as we zooms out. You'll see how high up... The scraggly little combretum tree, this little leopard cub has managed to scurry up. It may look a little bit exaggerated now because it is growing up from the kind of base of the, the riverbank there. But how cool is this? And such a good sign that it's happy to climb fairly high and capable of climbing fairly high already because of the fact that mom is bringing kills back to her. It means that it is imperative that she can escape up into the safety of even small trees like this. It will be very, very difficult for hyena and lion to get to her. So, a, not only a beautiful scene, but also a very, very useful one, considering the fact that she does need to be cautious and capable of escaping, which this is a good a very good example of her being able to do just that. Hello, Mr. Q. You would like to know how big is this cub in terms of weight? Well, I would guess two kilograms, maybe. Maybe a tiny bit more than that. Four pounds, five pounds. Um, I've never weighed a, a baby leopard cub, so I'm just trying to kind of compare it to a baby human. <laughs> which are usually born at around 3 kgs. <laughs> and I think this looks fairly uh, similar size to a newborn baby baby human. Um, 
Maybe I'm wrong, though. <laughs> Maybe I've chosen the wrong kind of animal to compare it to. Maybe a domestic cat. How much does your average domestic cat weigh, I wonder? Four kilos? This wouldn't be of the size. It comes well done, VM. How quick did it get down that tree and start heading back to Mom? And it looks like she's doing her best to sneak up on Mom through the long grass. Watch how carefully she's placing her paws down, trying not to make a noise. You sneaky little thing. Now, sadly, when we reposition to get into a good spot to see her up the tree, we kind of forwent the opportunity to see Mom. So, oh, let me... No, we still got a gap there, so that's okay. Let's not, let's not risk moving. And I just want to see... Actually, let's move quickly, because I've got a feeling this little cub's going to pounce on Mom. There we go. So the cub's just behind Mom. Mom hasn't looked in her direction that I'm aware of yet, so be ready for that little cub to come charging. Oh, Mom's detected you. <laughs> I wonder... Oh, <laughs> it did a little half-hearted pounce there. But I guess the fact that it had been detected deterred it from pursuing a full attack. Oh, she's seen that tail twitching. Is she going to go for it? Sometimes she gets into very, very playful moods. The most playful I've ever seen her was yesterday morning. It was so, so cool. But I guess it requires mom to be willing to play. Cute. Because sometimes mom won't be in a playful mood. And how absolutely cute is this? Yes, Mary, this little cub is certainly a little ball of energy. And it looks like it's now spending some time grooming its mother. And it's already learnt the ways of the wild with regards to that. It seems like it may even be trying to pluck off little ticks. And I'd be very impressed that it's, if, if it's already learnt that skill at such a young age. Hello, you little cutie. So mom's still a little bit snarly this afternoon. I'm not too sure why. Maybe it's the hot weather. Now, will she tolerate the little cublet having a nurse, or is the cub not too interested in it? Didn't seem like it for now. Very good. Well, seeing as though the little cub has disappeared away from Mum for the time being, we're going to send you back up to the Masai Mara to watch the approaching storm with Ralph. It's in a bit of a... Well, it's turning into what seems to be a little bit of a playful mood that it's getting itself into. It's been sneaking up to Mom, but it's just stopped, so we'll leave it for the time being. I was kind of playing with her for a bit, and then it went off, and I'm thinking it's planning its next stalking attack towards her. Happy that you got to see a ground scraper thrush with Steve. It's not a bird that we see too often, and I really do like them. It's one of my favorite birds, the ground scraper thrush. Not too sure what it is about them, but I do quite like them. Where is the little cub? Is it still headed in the thickets? We will be able to reposition ever so slightly. We just came here to try and get the best possible shot. Where we were earlier, there was a branch in the foreground that was getting blitzed by the afternoon sun. It was blowing out completely on VM shots. And because these moments are so magical, we are trying to get the best possible pictures possible to not only show you guys, but also to record for the future. Future records. Now, I've got a feeling that Tandy might take us hunting later this evening. But for now, she is certainly looking very, very relaxed. Oh, we need to rush you off to Herbie, who's got himself into a bit of a predicament with a buffalo thorn. I hope he's okay. Welcome back. Um, we are here with this beautiful tree, a buffalo thorn tree. Why a buffalo thorn? When buffaloes get attacked by... Lions, they'll run towards this tree, put their backs, 
and face the predators with their massive horns. And that's how this tree got its name, Buffalo Thorn. I've got another interesting story to tell about this tree. For the students, especially the students, when they're about to complete their metric, they will, the parents will buy a bag, cut a branch of the buffalo thorn, put the branch inside the bag, and when they do a farewell party, they will give the bag to the student, at the present, with a very, very strong message. I'll say it in Shangan. Mwananga. Famba uyala vantiru. Kambe mngarivari kuyaka. And the message is, go out, experience life, but never forget to come back. And another Word for the buffalo thorn. The name came from the thorns itself because it does look like buffalo thorn. One in a normal buffalo shape horn and the other one in a defor deformed shape. So in this case, this is where the name buffalo th thorn comes from. Nay, can I eat a buffalo thorn? Of course, yes. I've done that many, many times. This is the favorite food for the locals. They'll take the leaves, boil, add some salt, and enjoy. Very, very nice and nutritious. The spinach. We will continue heading south. As we continue, let's cross over to Scott, who has got something for us. Well, happy that Herbie found himself a buffalo thorn salad mid-walk. And I'm further gladdened by the fact that he found it delicious. Now, we haven't moved an inch yet, so I'm not actually too sure where the cub is. I'm torn as to whether to reposition or just to give it a few more minutes to see if the cub doesn't come back to mom. It tends to be kind of the cub's tactics this afternoon. Go off, play around, climb a tree, come back, check in on mom, go off again. So I'm hoping that she could be currently stalking mom as we speak but it's quite thick around us so we've only got a very small window of opportunity maybe we should actually just reverse a little bit and see if we can get a view of the cub all right francis in israel you are wondering whether i think I would have spent more time with this cub due to the fact that there's only one of them. Um, no, I don't think that is the case. I think that she would spend the same amount of time with cubs regardless of how many of them there are. Although, I mean, the only thing that would kind of cause her not to is the fact that she will obviously have less cubs to look after, so it's less milk that you need to expend to all possibly three individuals, which does mean she would need to spend less time away hunting. So I guess, I mean, possibly through default, yes, she spent more time with this cub because she's had to spend less time looking for meals for more hungry mouths. So I guess that would be my theory on the situation. I don't think that, you know, leopardess or, or lions will, will care more for a single cub as opposed to having two or three because they're all so vulnerable. First lady, you would like to know when do leopard cubs start developing their senses? Well, I guess as soon as they're born. Um, they're born blind and, and helpless and are just kind of little furry worms um, for the first few days of their life. And then slowly their eyes will open and then they'll de develop the sense of sight. And 
you know, their smell will start kicking in possibly from even younger than that. Maybe they'll be able to smell the mother's mammary glands or maybe it's just instinct that they can head towards them for suckling because that they'll do from the get-go. But each and every day that this cub is here on the planet, it is learning and developing its senses and skills. There's no two ways about that. And each day will provide it different lessons and different opportunities to hone different senses and skills. So it is already fully underway with the learning process. It would have already probably learned quite a lot simply due to the fact that it's still alive is testament to that fact. If it wasn't quick with the, up, the, up, the up updates, it wouldn't be able to survive the dangers, Archer. Ah! Well, this is one of my favorite parts of being on Safari Live. We have a new viewer, and her name is Icy Angel. Very nice name. It's wonderful to have you with us. And yes, we are certainly in Africa. You were wondering where about we were. And we are currently on the southern tip of uh, the continent in South Africa, but on the kind of northeastern boundary of our country, quite close to Mozambique and Zimbabwe in the Great Kruger National Park. And had you have tuned in about half an hour ago, you would have also got to meet some of our crew members who are up in Kenya in the Masai Mara. So we're currently filming out of two locations, and who knows where we will end up next. I see Angel, wonderful to have you with us. Now, you've come at a very good time because to be viewing a leopardess with her tiny little furball cub on your first safari is an absolutely epic, epic start. We are very, very fortunate to be in the situation. It's not all the time that leopards have cubs because of the fact that once they've had one, they'll spend anywhere from 12 to 18 months raising it before they can give birth to the next cubs. And... I'm not sure if you've logged in right now, if you even got a glimpse of the cub yet. I'm not too sure where it's hiding out. But we haven't seen it for the last few minutes. I'm sure it won't be away from one side for too long. Oh, very good. Well, I'm sure a lot of you guys are enjoying having Steve around and also noticing that he loves spending time out of the vehicle, even when he's not on the bushwalk. I wonder what he's found now. All righty then, millipedes, not the tastiest of morsels out here. Interestingly, I'm not sure exactly what animals Herb did touch on, but one animal that fascinated me was the tortoise. Our resident camp lady tortoise called Gregory. Yes, a lady called Gregory, because we didn't know she was a lady initially when we gave her the name. Well, I wasn't around, but that's the story. Um, she likes to eat millipedes, and I never knew that until we were told about it. So, interesting stuff. And what a joy being able to be out on foot and ping-pong from that to a leopard sighting like this. And who knows what Steve will come up with next. But really, really spoiled with all the action out here. I often think about the guests here who are stuck with their one guide for the whole safari, not being able to ping-pong and teleport from vehicle to bushwalk, from Sabi Sands to Kenya. So we really are all fortunate to be involved in this intimate safari experience. Ah, Dale, you would like to know what is the biggest prey item a leopard could take down? Well, the biggest animal that I've ever seen a leopard kill was a male leopard taking down a fully grown kudu bull. And a fully grown kudu bull is uh, way in excess of 200 kilograms, so probably double the size of the male leopard. So a, a huge, huge animal. And occasionally they catch b baby giraffe. That's another interesting one uh, and large animal that they'll take down. Um, a female leopard, biggest prey I've seen a leopardess take down. Sure, I can't think of anything probably other than an Anyala bull. But 
This female leopard, for example, walked straight past the Ninyala bull the other day and hardly even looked at it. It wasn't even an option for her to, to stalk it and hunt it. And interestingly, the Ninyala bull followed her, just kind of walking after her. Once it realized that it wasn't interested in her, it just kind of like walked after her, going, oh my gosh, this is a leopard. And furthermore, what further kind of surprised me was the fact that the Inyala bull did not let off one alarm call. So had a fr his friends and his girlfriends known that there was a leopard about and he wasn't doing his bit for the neighborhood watch, I'm sure he wouldn't be a very popular Nyala. But a lot will depend on the area the leopards live in. Some areas uh, in India, the leopards will, will kind of focus on hunting bush pigs, which is quite interesting and quite dangerous. Not that they take down the big bush pigs, but there are large adult bush pigs that go tearing after the leopard once it's managed to sneak in and snipe one of the wieners. Oh, interesting. Now, I'm told there's uh, a lot of you that are interested in Gregory, the queen tortoise of Juma. And you'd like to know what kind of a tortoise she is. She is a speaks hinged back tortoise. We get two kind of main types of tortoise here in the Sabi Sands, the leopard tortoise and the speaks hinged back. The speaks is considerably smaller uh, than the leopard tortoise when it's fully grown. Um, and we will be sure to try and get some footage of uh, Gre Gregory so that you guys can uh, get to see what she's up to. Interestingly, Gregory brought one of her boyfriends into camp the other day, but he wasn't quite as relaxed as she is uh, with all of the humans roaming about. She's completely okay walking in and around our camp because she's been spending quite a lot of time there over the last, I think, over a year. She frequents the camp almost daily. And Alana, you were hoping that you would be able to meet Gregory one day. Maybe we'll have to do a, a live segment on Gregory when she comes to visit in camp so we can put her on the map. We're hoping that one day she's going to bring a trail of her tiny little babies into camp for a tour. That would be absolutely awesome. Now, where is the little cub? I'm very surprised that we haven't seen it for so long. And I guess the fact that it has been with mom, or mom has been with it for so long now, uh, since yesterday or mid, you know, kind of mid-afternoon yesterday, Mother may, may have arrived with a small warthog piglet that they both got to snack on. It seems like it is finished. There was no sign of it in the tree. But because she has been here for about 24 hours, the cub's probably been playing so much that it needs to now catch up on... Well, she interestingly isn't eating the bacon just yet. She's just picked up the hind leg of the warthog, the only remains, I'm guessing, of it, and she is kind of what it sounds like as she opens her mouth. And interestingly, the cub must be in a bit of a coma because she's not responding. She's just leaving mom hanging. Mom's went and got a little snack. She wants to share it with the cub, but she's not coming. Oh, I just heard a, a, a response, a high-pitched meow, meow. So I'm guessing the cub is kind of waking up and thinking about coming back to mom. I wonder where it's hiding. It's probably somewhere up in those thick green bushes that we're kind of looking at now. That is where we kind of last saw the cub come from. Now, the calls that she's making are quite soft, even though in the final control room is trying to pump up the ambient audio. Sadly, we're still not picking up those soft wow. Wow. that mom's letting out. I'm sure it won't be too long until the cub starts coming down to check in why mom's calling. Juliet, you're wondering if an orphaned leopard cub would ever be adopted by another one. Um, highly, highly unlikely. Um, leopards compete ferociously with uh, other leopards.
that's strange things do happen in nature from time to time, and you probably find that somewhere at some point in time. Oh, here comes the cup. Well done, VM. This is going to be epic. She's been away from mom for quite some time, probably sneezing, so I'm hoping she is now full of energy. And I can't wait to see her also nibbling on the little leg of the warthog that's lying in the grass next to mom. I've never seen this little cub chew on anything. So it will be a first for me. I think I'll only confirm sighting. Oh, mom's going to pick up the leg of the warthog now. And is she just going to hand it over to the little cublet to snack on? Time will tell. Looks like the cub's thinking it's a game because it's gone back into stalk mode. <laughs> Alive. It looks like it's getting ready for a pounce, and you'll possibly find that it can actually smell the meat because the wind is blowing from us towards the leopard. So you, I'm guessing this little leopard cub knows that there's something there. Maybe not. Maybe she thought Mom was trying to play. Mom has not picked up that leg, and it looks like she might start nibbling on it. But I'm fairly certain her intentions are to try and give the cub some of it because as soon as she picked it up from where it was hidden in some undergrowth. She had used her paw to cover it with some leaves and grasses. As soon as she plucked it out of there, she immediately started calling the cub. Although now, once the cub approached, she seemed like she may have growled at it. So, hmm, I wonder what exactly is going on here. The tail almost perfectly framed the little cub's head there. Get ready for some screenshots because that would make for a wonderful shot if she does, in fact, frame the little cublet with her tail. Seems like the cub now is thinking, well, why'd you call me if you're not going to be any fun? You're not playing? You're not wanting to share your kill? What's going on here, Mom? Maybe she just wants to show. We certainly do. Interestingly, Tundi's just got up on the move and the cub came bounding after her, so I'm sure we are going to get some more good views over there. But it didn't look like she finished the kill and the cub went straight past it, which was interesting. Maybe she's looking for another little bit that she may have hidden somewhere. Sorry about the antenna there, not in the best spot, but it is what it is. And because she is very close to us, I'm not going to risk moving the vehicle. Let's take a look at the cub VM. It's on its way down on the same path that mom kind of used. There it comes. And it may have a little bit more trouble negotiating the steep bank. Mom made it look easy. Let's see how this little cublet manages. Ah. Without too much trouble. I wonder what's going on here. You can see even the cubs sniffing around there. Something's got its attention, and I'm guessing that something, what, at least a portion of the warthog, may have been stashed somewhere here. Another good example of how this cub's senses are really in full swing. You can see it was definitely sniffing quite intently there. And now it's coming, bounding after mom, who seems to still be searching for something. I'm not too sure what it is. Hello, Paula. You would like to know if cubs will lose their milk teeth just like human children do. And yes, they certainly will. They don't just have one set of teeth in their life. They do have two. As far as I'm aware, I actually might be wrong. But I'm confident that is the case. I need to be careful, though, because the other day I was confident that Wahlberg's eagles were here for the entire year, and it turns out they're migratory, thanks to James Richards. He <coughs> corrected me there. Got a little bit confused. So, happy for anyone to double-check that, but I'm fairly certain they do, in fact, have two sets of teeth. Let's just stop here. I want to move the vehicle as little bit as possible when we are close to them and when they are on the move. 
Hmm. Well, Tony was looking up into the skies there, and it wasn't quite kind of the skies she was looking into. It was more that milkberry tree, and it was that same very tree that she climbed up yesterday and hoisted the water kill up there. So maybe there's a little piece of the carcass that remains there, hard to be certain. What are you looking for, Tandy? What's going on? Now, I might be wrong. She may have actually just completely wolfed down that warthog leg that we saw her carrying a little bit earlier. And that's why she would have left it. And I'll be looking for any more snacks or morsels that may remain. What's going on, Tandy? Have you forgotten where you've hidden your food? Earlier on, she went and sniffed in one spot first and then went to the second spot where she, in fact, found the warthog. So that, to me, is quite interesting, that she didn't remember to go back to the exactly correct spot. She knew it was in one of two spots. Now, we might get lucky. She may go up the tree, and we're going to have a beautiful, beautiful scene if she does, because the light is perfect. It looks like she is going to go up. And the cub... The cub was also climbing up there. Go up and let the cub follow you. That would be groundbreaking stuff for us. She's thinking about it. Come on, Tundi. Please. Come on, little cub. Show Tundi how to climb the tree if mom doesn't want to. We'll be more than happy for you to go up. Look at you, you little rebel. <laughs> I'll show you the way, mom. Watch this. <laughs> Can you actually believe it? How cool. It's almost made it up to the main kind of fork in the tree. If it gets to there, it'll be m f far easier for it to carry on climbing up. It's less steep than this initial kind of portion of the trunk that it's starting to ascend. Maybe if the cub gets out mom's way, mom will go all the way up. No. Nope. Some Franklin's calling very close to us, so that will be the chick -da -da -da, chick -da 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 that you can hear. It's a crested Franklin. There's a chance it has seen Tundi. Okay, I think we can reposition now because, actually, it's, yeah, let's have a quick reposition. I think we'll be okay. I don't think we'll be too close to Tundi if we are and she lets us know that she doesn't want us so close, we will just simply move back a bit. Oh, we're going to get some great low angle shots here, albeit briefly. It makes such a difference shooting up onto your subjects, and it certainly helps when there's beautiful, a dappled afternoon light being cast on their magnificent coats. Ah, oh, Tundi. Just a little mini snarl there. Now, it is cooling off quite a bit, and because of that, I've got a feeling this cub is going to start getting playful, but it looks like I'm completely wrong, and it's going to get comfortable and have a quick suckle instead. I think I can possibly roll back a tiny bit. No. Oh, my earpiece fell out. Whoops. Thanks, VM. Okay, we're going to send you across to Steve and hope you have a good time with him. <laughs> we do, kind of, as you can see at the moment, we're moving. We just want to try and get you guys into the best spot possible as she makes her way down this riverbed towards us. We kind of managed to loop ahead of her. And if we just sneak forward a few more meters, I'm sure we're going to get you some great views. Here we go. This is going to be good enough. I don't want to get too close to her. And there's just one big green bush in her way. But once she pops onto the other side of it, there's a bit of a clearing as she needs to cross a road. So, an indigenous plants on Juma. There definitely are a couple. Um, blackjacks are the only ones that I can think of that the, the, the name I know. But there is also a red flower. It's slipped my mind that we sometimes see in the quarantine clearings. There haven't been any this year due to the fact that, here they go, there's been hardly any rain. 
And the little cublet is trotting along after mom. Cute. <laughs> Not a worry in the world. You really get a good idea of how big their paws are. Quite big paws for such small little beasts. Let's see, I think we are going to be able to sneak through another little spot here to get some more great views of them. Hmm. Going to have to loop ahead a little bit in order for this operation to work. Which I think it will, and we may be lucky and get some glorious afternoon golden sunlight on them. But while we get into a decent spot, we're going to send you across to Herbie with a mantid. Thanks, Steve. We certainly do. And there goes the little bundle of joy having a jolly good time on this little exploratory mission. Now, it must be said that this leopard is heading towards where we saw the Inkuhuma lioness a little bit earlier. Oh, it looks like we're in luck. Look at this. Oh, no. Paul's in the way. Oh, what a pity. And, as you can see, she's just <laughs> jumped down. Tongi, just seven years old, you'd like to know if there's... Uh, any other small cats that we see in the park and yes there are some small cats that we see serval if we lucky caracal if we even luckier and if we even luckier than that we sometimes see african wild cat but they're not uh, very common but there are a few smaller cats that we do see out here tongi and if you keep watching these safaris i'm sure one day we'll be able to find you one of them well, we are probably going to stay put and just hope that we get a few more visuals of it. It's going to be too difficult to reposition before the end of what has been a wonderful sunset safari. I hope you guys have all had a good time. It certainly has been wonderful from my side. Well done to everyone involved. Thanks, VM on camera. Be sure to tune into the safaris tomorrow. See you then.